Hi there. I am Dr. Daniel Martinez, Vice President of Student Services at Texas Lakes Community College. Today you will help me create a new database for tracking students and their faculty advisors. We will start with a blank desktop database, just like you would in other office programs. In the Access Opening screen click Blank Desktop Database. In the File Name box, click the Browse icon. Now navigate to the location where you will be saving your databases for this chapter. Create a new folder called Access Chapter 1 and then press Enter. With the fo folder name selected, in the File New Database dialog box, click Open. Using your own name. Replace existing text with your last name first name just like Mike did. In the blank desktop database dialog box, click create. After you have named and saved your database, the next step is to consult your database design plan then create the tables for your data. Step 1, in the navigation pane, click shutter bar open close button to collapse the navigation pane to a narrow bar on the left step 2. In the field names row, click anywhere in the text click to add to display a list of data types. Step 3, on the list of data types, click short text, and notice that in a second column, click to add changes to field 1, which is selected. Type last name and then press enter step 4, you can also type T to select short text, type first name and then press enter step 5, in the fourth field name box, click short text. Type middle initial and then press enter. Step 6, create the remaining fields from this table. Now we will rename fields and change data types in a table in the first column, click anywhere in the text ID. On the ribbon, under the table tools, on the fields tab, in the properties group, click name and amp. Caption. In the enter fields properties dialog box, in the name box, change the ID to student ID click OK to close the enter fields properties dialog box. On the ribbon, in the formatting group, Notice that the data type for the student ID field is auto number. Click the data type arrow, click short text. Now we will add a record to a table in the new record row. Click in the student ID field to display the insertion point. Type 1,023,045 and then press enter. With the insertion point positioned in the last name field. Type fresh and then press enter. Type the following information into to continue completing the database.
To give your table a meaningful name, on the Quick Access Toolbar, click Save. In the Save As dialog box, in the Table Name box, using your own name, replace the selected text by typing your last name first name 1A students just like Mike did. Click OK and notice that the Object tab now contains the new table name. Now we will add additional records to the table in the new record row. Click the student ID field and then enter the data here for the two additional students. Access, you can import data from a variety of sources. In this activity, you will append, add on, data from an Excel spreadsheet. In the upper right corner of the table to click Object Close to close your 1A students table. On the ribbon, click the External Data tab. In the Import and AMP Link Group, click Excel. In the Get External Data, Excel Spreadsheet dialog box, click Browse. In the File Open dialog box, navigate to your student data files, double-click the Excel file AO1A Students. Click the Append a copy of the records to the table option button, and then, in the box to the right, click the arrow.
press Escape to cancel the list, and in the dialog box, click OK. In the lower right corner of the wizard, click Next. Click Finish. In the Get External Data, Excel Spreadsheet dialog box, click Close. Open the Navigation pane. Double-click your 1A student's table in the Navigation pane to open your table in the object in the Data Sheet view. Notice at the bottom, there are now 25 records in the table. Now you will delete the middle initial field from the table. On the ribbon, click the Home tab. In the Views group, click the View arrow to display a list of views. On the list, click Design View. In the field name column to the left of middle initial, point to the row selector box to display the pointer, and then click one time to select the entire row. Under Table Tools, on the Design tab, in the Tools group, click Delete Rows. Read the message in the message box, and then click Yes. Your table still displayed in Design View, in the Field Name column, click anywhere in the Student ID field name. In the lower area of the screen, under Field Properties, click Field Size to select 255. Type 7 and then press Enter. In the Student ID row click the Description box, Type 7 Digit Student ID Number and then press Enter. Click in the State Field Name box. In the Field Properties area, change the field size to 2 and in the Description box for this field, Type 2 Character State Abbreviation and then press Enter. Click in the Faculty Advisor ID field name box. In this field properties area, change the field size to 8 and in the description box for this field, type 8 character ID of instructor assigned as an advisor and then press enter. On the Quick Access Toolbar, click Save to save changes to the design changes to your table and notice the message. With your table still displayed in Design View, in the Field Name column, click in the Student ID Field Name box. To the left of this box, notice a small key. This primary key is set up that it won't let you enter values that are duplicates in case you need unique values such as student number. With your table still displayed in Design View. In the Field Name column, click in the Student ID Field Name box. To the left notice the small key icon. On the Design tab, in the Views group, notice the View button displays a picture of a datasheet, indicating that clicking View will switch to the View to Datasheet view. Click the top of the View button. On the ribbon, click the External Data tab, and then in the Import and AMP. Link Group, click Excel. In the Dialog box, click Browse. In the File Open Dialog box, navigate to the location where your student data files are stored, and then double-click the Faculty Data file. Be sure that the Import the Source Data into a new table in the Current Database Option button is selected, click OK, and then click Next. In the upper left corner of the wizard, select the first row contains column headings checkbox. Click Next. Notice that the first column, Faculty ID, is selected, 
and then in the upper area of the wizard, the field name and the data type display. Click Next. In the upper area of the wizard, click Choose My Primary Key Option button and then be sure to that faculty ID displays in the box to the right. Click Next. In the Import to Table box, using your own name type your name like Mike did to give the new table a name. In the Get External Data Excel Spreadsheet dialog box, click Close. Open the Navigation pane. In the Navigation pane, double-click your Faculty Advisors table to open it and close the Navigation pane. In your Faculty Advisors table, click in the Postal Code field in the first record. On the ribbon, under Table Tools, click the Fields tab. In the formatting group, click the data type arrow, and then click short text. In the object window, click the object tab for your student's table to make it the active object and display it in the object window. In the field names row, point to the right edge of the address field to display the pointer. With the pointer position to the right of the address field, double-click. Point to the city field name to display the down arrow pointer, right-click to select the entire column and then click Field Width. In Column Width dialog box, click Best Fit. Also, adjust the email, faculty ID, and amount columns to best fit the width of these columns. Do the same for student ID. On the Quick Access Toolbar, click Save to save the column widths you just changed. 